thank you for coming to my talk, uh, which I found actually is the only one on this track which has the beginner label uh, for whole Remedemi track. I asked my friend why I'm the only one having the beginner talk. He told me because I suck. So that's, that's the reason. I'll do my best to, to not fulfill his wish that I suck. So I'm talking, uh, I'll be talking about the event sourcing with F Sharp and Cosmos DB. My name is Roman Provazník. Uh, I'm from Czech Republic. I work in Prague uh, as a F Sharp team leader uh, or lead developer. I am founder of F Sharping, which is the Prague uh, meetup group. And uh, also, I'm really terrible drummer, but I like it. So, uh, last time I did this talk, it took one hour and 17 minutes, so I'll be quite fast today, but hopefully uh, we will get into some, some code and some demo. I will talk about event sourcing with F Sharp and Cosmos DB, why to do it, how to do it, why not to do it, and how not to do it properly. Uh, so, first of all, I think it's good to, because it's a beginner talk and I suck, so we will start from the very beginning. And uh, what is an event? What is event? The, what it means, event? It's actually the fact that happened in the past and cannot be changed anymore. This is something that everyone knows, it's, it's really known for you. However, it's good to start from the foundation that fact is immutable. It's, it's the event is a fact that cannot be changed. Something is done and you cannot do anything uh, about it, except that you can somehow react on it. So things that happened, uh, like email sent, article published, uh, file deleted, or my personal favorite one, anniversary forgotten. So try it, try to forget about your wife's anniversary. You will find out that event is something that you cannot change anymore. You can do a lot of compensating events, but uh, that's all you can do. You cannot, you cannot change them. So those events are usually created based on some commands or other events. I will get to it later, but just for now, as a foundation, uh, remember that that event is something that happened and you cannot do anything about it. What is an event sourcing? Event sourcing, uh, I looked for a lot of definitions and how to explain it properly. I found actually two, then I get rid of one, and now I like this one, which is uh, storing all changes or events to the system rather than storing its current state. If you like the F sharp, too long, didn't read version, it's uh, something like function that uh, has a state and takes an event and returns brand new state. So uh, when, when I said that I will talk about event sourcing, uh, I will speak about what's really good about it and what I like, but I think it's really fair to start talking about when and why you should not used event sourcing. First of all, and to be fair, uh, it matters a lot, it really increases the software complexity. Um, I can still compare when in my previous job we did typical CRUD applications with storing some entity, updating, deleting, it was pretty easy. Uh, going for event sourcing, like it or not, well, change the way how you think about application, how you think about state, how you think about software, and it really increase the amount of time you need to spend with designing your system and the amount of time you need to spend to think about your system. It's not always fit for your application. For example, when you have application where state changes so often, and you actually don't care about the previous state or how it led to the previous state, like I can, like some gaming apps, for example, um, I would not go for event sourcing. And also, uh, there's one special thing, or there are many special things about event sourcing, but uh, it's fair to, 
to say that event sourcing has own set of issues like versioning, like splitting domain into, into streams, how to handle sagas. There are a lot of things then once you get into the event sourcing, you will need to take care of and it's not that easy. So just to be fair, event sourcing is great, but it's not a silver bullet and uh, keep in mind that it's not easy at all even if it's look like from the beginning to be easy stuff. Why you should use event sourcing? Why it's good to go with events and uh, think differently about, about applications? First of all, for us as a people who love the sharp, it's natural approach. Uh, you work uh, with event store, which is by design the immutable storage, so you are still in the immutable world. You work with immutable data structures, events. As I said, once you have an event, uh, you can do a lot of with it, but you cannot change it. And basically to keep it all working, there are a lot of things, but uh, in the behind there's sleeping one little fold function that take everything, uh, that, that powers everything. So. Uh, for you, there's nothing brand new. If you know F-sharp, if you're a little bit familiar with F-sharp data structures and, and functions, um, it's a na natural approach for you to, to go with, with uh, event sourcing uh, this way. Good thing, and I really love the way how it affects me as a developer, is that when you go for event sourcing, you start thinking different. You start to see events everywhere uh, because your customers are thinking in advance. Uh, I never, it never happened to me that I had a customer, maybe it would be some other developer, but he would never give me a job because developers are used to do their own job by themselves. But uh, ne no customer never told me, never gave me some specific technical description like make an insert into this table and change the version by one. No, they want to something to be happen. They want user to be activated, to email to be sent, to supplier, to article to be published. To, they something to be changed, to something to happen, but they don't care how, how you should do it, what's the complexity behind. So if you talk to non-technical people, that's really good. Then when you're both thinking in advance, it really helps you to get in somewhere to, to at least I'm not saying that's happening all the time, but at least get closer your languages together so you understand each other when you are, when you are having some call and, and, and discussing things. For me, focus on events uh, creates like technology agnostic communication with the client, with the customer, because as said, you have one language, even if you still believe that one event is different than, than what the uh, customer described you at least are on the, not the same, but maybe the similar track going similar direction. What is really important and really funny is when you think about events, you now start thinking also about events in the time aspect, in the timeline. What happen if some event occur before another event or after that, or how should I in time react on th three things happening uh, within some time range. It's, it's really, really uh, nice uh, that this approach will push you into, into also looking at your system, not, uh, not as a thing that you send some events and it doesn't mean anything, it only changed states. No, you are thinking about your system and about the state of the system during time during some, some uh, period. It's a really, really cool one. And what is really good about it is that we are now having uh, in discussion third project based uh, not fully but partially on event sourcing and for some things we see the similarities in the thing how we discuss uh, specific things across different industries. We are now working on system for wedding suppliers for, for uh, Dubai. Now we are discussing the uh, crane industry. Uh, then uh, we probably will have a different project for quite different industry. And still there are some foundation 
uh, when you're thinking in advance that you can use and you can build on. So uh, thinking in advance is, is, is pretty cool. What you as a developer would really like is that it's not so difficult, I would say when it's easy to test your system uh, using the event sourcing. I have a little lame example here on five lines with, actually it's four, actually the code is only three of them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can see, and even if I'm not going to explain anything, you can have a look and you see that I forgot to change uh, the title of the code. Uh, but uh, what you are really testing is that you expect that if you withdraw 100 and apply it to the state before, which was 500, you expect to have 400 on your account. I previously there was test that it fails, but it was test with commands and we are not at commands uh, state yet. So, so uh, sorry about it, but uh, the meaning is that even if you don't, you don't have to read the name of the function and you see what's going on, that you test the fact that affect, uh, affected the, the state and now you expect withdrawing 100 from your account that you have now only uh, 400, having 500 before. What is pretty cool about event sourcing is quite safe because uh, all of us, uh, we all have logs, we have audit logs, we are logging everything, but still having log and having things stored in event store, it's different approach because if your log fails, and it sometimes happens, it happened many times to us, your application can still continue, can still work, and your customers can be still quite happy. If you, if you lost your event store, uh, you're basically screwed, but good thing about it is that until like this happens, if your event store is alive, everything which is inside is, is the fact that you can trust and you can, you can build on it. So, uh, for example, and we do it quite a lot, you can replay our events uh, to create new projection, to create new view on the data on the events you already have in your event store. So this happened two weeks ago. Our customer called us and said, hey, uh, we want new feature in our system. We want something we call a review tab. And if you click to the, to the supplier detail in your system, we want to see the history, what happened from the very beginning. So yeah, no problem, we can start with that. They said, yeah, but we would like to have it uh, to display all the data since we are in production. So I said, but you're in production for seven months? And say, yeah. So okay. Because luckily, we are using event sourcing. So we can go and replay all the events since the very beginning and create new projection, new view on the data from the event store and fulfill this requirement. If you would only store the last thing, or last state into like one row in the in database, you would probably have a lot of work to do to fulfill this requirement. Probably you would have to go to your audit logs to pray to the demo gods and to the IT gods that everything is stored in there and alive and in good shape. But if you know that you store everything happened during the very first initial release, you're okay with that. You can start getting out the data you even didn't know that you are interested in. So it's, it's really good. And as I said, uh, by design, you have a full audit lock elevated to the single source, source of truth. So like to this possibility, it's really, really cool. But again, as I said, remember, still not a silver bullet. <coughs> so how to start? Uh, I was thinking that I will make a little introduction, then I will show you how we did it. So I need to warn you a few, few things are, okay, uh, first of all, this is highly opinionated rep approach. So it means that there could be one of thousands, hundreds of ways how to do event sourcing in F-sharp. This is our way, this is how we, uh, when we first were thinking about it, how, how we created our system. But if you have a different approach, 
Uh, after my talk, I'll be all ears to, to listen and, and learn from it because, as I said, this is highly opinionated. Second one is now I'm going to mix a little bit CQRS and the event sourcing terms. Uh, just I'm saying just in case that you would be offended by that, but I think you're quite okay with that. So, so if we will start, and I will start on really simple like to do MVC application because everything now used to do MVC application, every framework, every library. So if you would, let's say you want to create an application where you will uh, add tasks to do, you will mark them, they are finished, you can delete them, whatever. First of all, you need a domain, or we call it a state. You will something that will, that will be affected by your events. So state is actually quite easy. It's the list of tasks, because if you have a look at your application, you have list of tasks, that's all you need to do. And then you have task itself, can have some ID, name, due date, and whether it's completed or not. This thing uh, has two meanings. First one is to use it for, or we use it in our approach for validation of commands that are coming to system. And second one is to somehow internally represent how like folding once one event on the top of another, how it, uh, what was what, the shape of all of this? What's the meaning of all of this? So there are there are uh, these are two main reasons why we have a state. Uh, and this state, of course, you need to start somehow somewhere. So each state has in it or default value, which will be for this kind of application quite easy. It will be list of task which is now empty. So we will use it as an initial before applying events on it. Then, and now I'm getting to like CQRS part, we will need comments. We, we use comments uh, a lot. It's really handy way how to, how to uh, create one or more events. So if you want in your application to add task, remove task, clear task, complete task, and change task due date, you would do it in this way. I think we are all skilled in F-sharp, so I don't have to explain how beautiful and amazing are the possibilities you have with using the union type. What is important here that uh, command is something you want your system to execute. So for such thing, you need a execution function. Execution function is, again, really, really easy. It's really easy to test, and when I shown the test before, it was actually first time uh, initially for, for, for uh, the command. So if you want to execute some command on some state, you will just match with command you got. So for example, at task, I will get out the ID and I will look, I will use helper function which works only on state and gets the ID only if task does not already exist which means that if I don't have in my current state the task with the same ID, and if it's okay, I will just release uh, as a result, uh, probably in a result because we use internal result, but you can, you can also throw exceptions if, if there's something wrong. You will, uh, you will return a list one or list of events. Here I return one, but uh, in the real life we use list of events. So. This function uh, is by design can fail anytime. It's by design, it can fail, and it's its purpose to fail if your command cannot be executed on the current state. But if it can be executed, it returns list of events. So we are now getting to the event. If you have a look, it looks exactly the same or almost the same as the command part, but it's in the past tense. So it's like task edit, task removed, all tasks cleared, and so on. So it's the thing that happened based on your command. And it's the thing that uh, we use for affecting the state. So now we are getting to the apply function, which is the one you saw uh, me testing. And it's, again, pretty easy. For example, if you get task edit, you know that now uh, the new state you are going to return, it's the task is new task and the 
already existing task. So this one has a special, uh, not feature, but apply should never or in our application, it never ever thrown an error. This is what you have the execute for. Apply only take an event and change the event or return new event to be precise. Uh, uh, return new state based on that event, sorry. So this is apply. It's, it's, it's called apply, so it applies the event on the current state. Uh, we actually use this one. This is, this is uh, type we use for all the different type of states and commands and events. We have, we have the uh, something we call the aggregate. It's simple generic F# -sharp record, which uh, has those three functions in it: execute and apply, and three types: state, command, event. It's it's actually pretty easy. Okay, now we are getting to the event stored part because I was talking about events, about commands, about uh, main three functions or Okay, in it actually it's not function value, but two functions, apply and execute. But when you have this, you still need one part which is pretty important, at, and it's the event store. Event store uh, is the append only database, so by design you cannot change it. Uh, data or events, again, are stored in something uh, you can call aggregation routes, streams, it's up to you. The, the important part is that all the data are stored in those streams as they appear in chronological way, in chronological order. So uh, if you have a look, for example, on, on this picture uh, showing how you would store data about two users and one order, uh, you see that user 012 was registered, activated, then was notified and uploaded this logo. User 3654 registered, activated, notified, and then for some reason, maybe wasn't happy, uh, deactivated. Uh, order 788 has different set of events, it's a different domain, it uh, has a created event and maybe canceled. Uh, correct or like splitting uh, things, splitting your domain into, into the streams in the correct way, I would say is the most important and most uh, difficult thing in event sourcing because uh, you could mess up a lot of things. You can also mess up events and if you know how to how to version them from, ver from one version to another, it's not a big deal. But if you mess up with how you store those data, it's getting ugly. So think not twice, not three times, maybe 10 times before you decide how you would store your data, how you would split it into, into streams. Because uh, heading back to the apply and the execute functions and the state, those things you are working with are valid only within those streams. So uh, if you want to like, re if you want to react on some event or, or uh, execute command based on something that exists in different stream, it's pretty difficult. And uh, sometimes it let you, such a thing let you to Rethink, rethink. Sorry, your state, your domain, and probably to split it in different. But once you start to split your events into streams, it's pretty painful to change it. So be really, really aware of that splitting into streams. It's it's not an easy one. And I tried really hard to come up with some brilliant one sentence idea that, uh, that I will give you and you would be happy. I said, yeah, now I know how to do it properly. But sorry, no, I did it wrongly and I had to spend all my weekend because I was too, sh too shy and too ashamed to, to tell to my colleagues that I had to redo everything because I was silly. So uh, it's, 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 it's a hard one. It's a hard one. I'm sorry, I don't have any, any magical sentence how to do it good, but just think about it and, and be aware that once you start, it's a it's pretty, pretty difficult one. Um, there are 
currently a lot of, oh, a lot of, there are some <laughs> event store solutions. I think the most uh, famous one is the eventstore.org, which is uh, backed by famous uh, Greg Young, which has a .NET API, HTTP API. You can, you can create uh, JavaScript projections in there. There's also persistence agnostic event store for .NET called ineventstore.org, but I was looking at the uh, GitHub and it looks quite like not dead, but not breathing well project right now. <laughs> But we will see. Also, you can create your own implementation in MongoDB, Postgres, or Cosmos DB. This is what we did. And actually, if you saw this talk from London, uh, I was thinking about the many wrong things we did creating uh, creating event store for Cosmos DB. And I'll get to it later. But Cosmos DB by itself, it's I think it's really good think uh, backed by Microsoft. Uh, somebody said it's it's expensive. Totally agree. It's really expensive. Uh, I also did my mistake when I just for fun created instance having 20,000 request units per second reserved. Then I found out that our customer is built one and $1,500 per month for dev instance. So then I realized that this is not the best way how to test Cosmos DB. <laughs> However, it must be pretty fast, uh, but there were only three requests like per week. Okay, but I tried. Uh, so, no, but frankly, it's, it's really, really great stuff. It's a globally distributed DB on Azure. Uh, it has many APIs, so you can work, it, work with it like uh, graph DB, key value storage. Uh, it's also document DB. There's also some Mongo DB uh, API. It's pretty fast. It has different consistent uh, models, so you can decide how trustful it should be for you. Uh, the pricing is still per collection, uh, which I don't like, but now I think it's not so long when Microsoft announced that you can like pre, how to say, pre-order, pre-reserve the some, some performance, and then you pay 40% less probably, I don't know. But what is quite good, it has support for stored procedures. So you can write, if you like JavaScript, stored procedures, go on. Triggers and user-defined functions. Uh, as I said, it's globally distributed, so you can decide where you want your database to be running and in many, how many instances. It has quite nice uh, JSON editor built in. You will see it later. And uh, uh, it has things we are going to use right now in production, which is the change feed. So if you want to notify other systems within the Azure ecosystem that something is happening to your event store, uh, you can use the change feed for subscribing so you can run some Azure functions or send it to event grid or things like this. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. And also if you want to start playing with it, you don't want to pay any money, uh, you can you can use the free emulator, which is which is also quite good for for playing with with Cosmos DB locally. Um, if you, as I said, we <laughs> learned our we learned our uh, lesson, and by the end we cr we decided to to uh, publish the event store for Cosmos DB and Azure Table Storage with uh, F-Sharp API. So uh, if you are interested in some open source stuff with, with Cosmos DB and Azure Table Storage, uh, so follow this address, have a look. You can download it uh, from Nugget. And I'll be happy if you would contribute and, and find some bugs and make it a nice F-Sharp library for, for Event Store. It's called Cosmos Store. If you go and Google Cosmos Store, you will find some uh, store for selling cosmetics. Uh, so that again, show me how that naming is hard in IT. However, uh, all the things we learned during our journey are put in there. So uh, have a look. Okay, so now where we are, we have a command events, we have a domain, we have event store, no matter if you use this one or if you go for Greg Young's event store or you create your own. So we have C from the CQRS completed. Now it's time to prepare the read side, the query side. 
which we uh, do a lot and we like it. ReadSight has, has one purpose and it's to provide data. So it's great that it can be things you, can, you are used to use and you can keep them. For example, SQL database with indexes, relations and so on. The database prepared for reading. Because one important thing is that since we are in uh, F-sharp community, we love type providers, don't we? And type providers for Azure, uh, Cosmos DB, or table storage, I don't know if there are any, and I believe they won't be at all, because problem with the schemaless database is that you don't have a schema. So uh, it's pretty difficult to create proper type from it. Uh, but if you have SQL provider. So if you want to read and query your data, you don't have to write manual SQL or use Depper. You can go and use SQL provider and take out of data from, from your database you created for reading purpose uh, as, as you like and as you are used to. So for example, if you want to uh, create the read site, it's really similar to the apply but it does the apply on the, on the SQL database side. So it's actually single uh, event handler when uh, listening for events. And for example, if I had as that some task was added, I will make a SQL insert into my database. Or if there are all tasks cleared, I can delete all. The same way we use for sending emails for any other IO we need to do in the, uh, like outside, outside the, uh, event store. What is really good that that you don't have to be tied up with the domain, with the state, with with just nothing. You can you can design it for your needs for to be to be really quickly written, but uh, you can change it anytime. You can change it, delete it, and replay events from the very beginning, and to have different view on the data. Or you can also, to make it really fast, you can fill it on different thread and only return from your application success of the execute function. And that's pretty cool. And also what is uh, really, really cool is that, that reading, like if it fails, it doesn't affect your domain logic. I mean, people st can still work with your application, can send commands, can change it. But of course, uh, they will not see uh, how it affected the read side because it's, it's down. But it doesn't mean that, that it's down for all of it. It's just the read side. So it's, it's really cool. It's really good. <laughs> cool. Good, cool. And um, the way, the, 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 the freedom you have with reading data, it's, it's pretty impressive if you think it. If, if, if you like really split it by the CQRS that this is the, this is the commands and this is the query and I want to do it different for each part. The ugly part, it's still eventually consistent and also um, <laughs> I will get to it by, uh, by the end, I have few hints for you, but if you do it and we did it a few times that you validating your commands based on the read side. I know you should not do it, but if you do it, the eventual consistency is really uh, it's really a problem because sometimes you could refuse to execute some absolutely perfect command uh, because you have old information because your read side wasn't filled from the previous events yet. So. So uh, that's, that's the ugly part about, about read side. But the other things, I cannot come up, come with any other bad thing about uh, read side. It's, I think it's, it's pretty cool to, to have it split. So uh, I have a demo, which, is it visible? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I created a really, really, uh, small application in F-sharp and .NET Core and all, is, all it does, okay, let's start like in F-sharp, so start from the bottom. So I will have a function that, uh, I will have a application that will add some task, that will complete the task and that will clear all tasks and you will see that after that 
you will have your event store filled and you will see each event in the event store, but the current state should be the, the, the empty, empty list because you cleared everything. So, uh, okay, maybe before, before I will start, I'll show you the, the main part. The main part is domain. So we are now in the world where, where you already know all of this because you have, a, you have command, you have event, all of them has different, uh, like comment and events now sharing the same command arcs, which are stored here, so you can have a look. But uh, it doesn't have to be that way we use it, but sometimes it makes sense to, for events to hold a little bit more information or different information that you get from, uh, from command. But you can use reuse the same, we do it a lot. So as you see, it's pretty easy, nothing fancy here. Then we have the aggregate, which are actually, here you see our beautiful type aggregate, which is actually two functions. First one is the execute. So I want to execute each command. And second one is the apply. So I'm applying only like blindly applying uh, events on the state and also I have the initial initial uh, value which is on the state itself it's the member in it and then I have a command handler here are some let's say not so fancy part but uh, ma only mapping from from uh, JSON to uh, to the domain and back and then my own type for demo, I call the demo store, which has two functions, get current state and append event. There's nothing, nothing else fancy there. So if I go back to my program, I will make F10. So I should have, so initial, initial state is the, I have empty list of tasks. Sure. So then I will add another one and have a look at the current state. So current state, oh, you see now I have, oh, I forgot to, sorry, I forgot to show you the read side. On the read side, there are handlers. So is the handle uh, function that uh, gets the event and handle it to console and to the SQL. I don't have prepared proper S SQL, but uh, each of those handlers has own logging. So you will, you will see that console handler says, hooray, we have a task. And SQL handler says insert into task blah 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 blah. It's like it's a fake uh, SQL insert into into database. You can see both of them are here. So looking at that, both handlers got event. Uh, do something with it, and looking back to the event store, I have a task as list with one item with the one task I already created. And now I can go on and I can complete the task. So SQL uh, handler say update the task, set is completed where ID blah, blah, blah. Console handler say, hooray, we have a task with ID and is completed. And then I will go and I will clear all tasks, which now console handler says, and now they are all gone. And SQL handler delete from task, again, the fake SQL query. And the state after the clearance is again, it's empty. But if you will go now into your, into, into your emulator, which I have now hopefully running, should be, because otherwise I would have an error. So I have an event store here, I have events. And now I have actually four documents here because one is used as a stream metadata. So you see the stream, which is called task, is now at position three. And now I have three events. First one was task edit with some data. Second one is task completed with different set of data. And the third one was all tasks cleared, which I mapped because it's the empty case on uh, empty case on disconnected union, so I uh, created as a as a null. But right now, 
if I decided, okay, I want to use uh, table storage instead, I will rebuild. <coughs> okay, here we go. So again, all my handlers will be ran and now I can go to the table storage and see more likely the same. So I can see there are some uh, events and also some stream with the latest position, latest updated and, and so on. So I have in my event store, I have all the data that happened since the very beginning to the stream, but uh, current state is empty, empty list, because the last one was all tasks cleared. And you know, looking at the apply function, that if happens all tasks cleared, I return or I affect the, the state by returning new one like this. So I just clear all tasks. So here you can see it's not so difficult. You can have you can have uh, different handlers, one for SQL, one for, I don't know, console, one for <coughs> sending emails. You can store your events in the safe way and you will not lose any kind of information that way. I promised I will have, I will have few hints. I call them battlefield hints. So first of all, never store state in ReadDB because uh, events is a thing that will probably never change or if it change you will get a new version of event but state the way how you understand the domain would and 100% will change during time so rather take it as a reactive way. So if something happen, react on it, store it somewhere, do something with it, like you do in the Fable apps when something happens, you create something new, but you don't, don't store the state itself into database. We tried, we failed. Believe me, it's better to think about the system only, only about uh, events, not the state itself. State we use only for internal representation of the domain and for the validation of the commands inside uh, that domain. This one is like good hint, this one is uh, critical. Never use ifs in apply. Ap take apply function as a stupid function that only takes an event and somehow affects the state and returns back the new state. If you want to, for example, if you would model application that after three failures of putting out money out of account, it's blocked. Don't do it in apply, do it in execute and return two events. First one is the failure of, of uh, like bad attempt to, to withdraw money failed. And second one is the account blocked. And only in the apply react on these two events, but don't decide in apply whether the state is this or this based on some internal internal representation like ifs are not for apply again we did it <laughs> we, we tried and we failed miserably so uh, uh, it's it's not good way like keep it keep it uh, keep it simple uh, this one is about serialization don't forget we are talking about the JSON all the time on this conference no tuples no discriminated unions in the arguments of the events. Be lazy, uh, take all the data, put them in the simple record like you saw in the command args record and let the serializer to, to store it in the event store. Because once you start working with the tuples, I know they are fine, but I don't believe they, they should be on the API of the system. So. Uh, also, do not forget that you will not create the commands and those arguments from, uh, from nowhere. You will get them from front end probably or for, for, from some different part of the application. So uh, sometimes it's pretty tricky to, to work with this, with this outside, of the, outside of the F sharp world. So, so better, better just keep it as a simple, 
simple stupid uh, records with few, few fields. This one, and this is we are heading back, think twice before you use read site for command validation. Think about the eventual consistency. As said, we did it because sometimes it's much easier to make simple query into the little table than go through all these other streams that could affect the logic. Uh, like, I'm, I'm not saying don't do it ever. Sometimes it makes sense, but really think when you do it because then you coupling the the <laughs> command side and the query side. Sometimes, sometimes it's effective and probably there's no other way how to do it. Sometimes it will give you a hint that you probably uh, split it your domain in the wrong way. So when you thinking about the your, your state whether this, within the stream and you find out that you need to have a look in the different stream, maybe your state is not inside one stream maybe your state should be many streams and should be like taken one level up. And again, choose wisely the event arguments. They're fine, that's, that's pretty nice to store everything, but do not forget that I can go, I can delete command. I can go, I can delete probably state, but I cannot go and delete the events. Once you have the event in the event store, it's in there, and will be there forever until you would create a new store and like, you know, import all of them and remap them. This is the one way how you can work with versioning. Uh, once it's there, think about that. Maybe in next version something will be different. You would have to you would have to remap it. So uh, this is the decision you will live really really long uh, long time with you. So uh, think think about events and their arguments really really hard. I think I already said word event maybe a thousand times, so uh, that's all. So thank you very much. And now it's your, it's your time to, to ask if you have any questions. If not, uh, thank you for coming here. Uh, the, the the record one uh, we use it for uh, we use it for uh, basically what what we have as a as a state as a, as a stream it goes one in one with the special aggregate so it affects the one uh, the things in that stream using the commands for that stream and and having the the events in that stream so for us the aggregate is the how for example it could be user it could be that order it could be supplier. But sometimes the, the aggregate is uh, for us uh, the list of those things. But then it still comes into the one stream. So, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you deal with the European data protection regulation? With the event store, if I send you, like, uh, you have to delete my personal data? Ah, GDPR, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, there are two ways. Uh, we thought we will get rid of it because we are working for uh, the first one for Dubai, and we say it's Dubai. Nobody cares about like th this kind of rights there, uh, probably because they send. They say we are not affected by this law. Then we realize that application is used worldwide, so we have to deal with it. Currently, uh, honestly, we only care on the on the read side level when they say delete everything from read side, and we delete it. Well, we still have it in event store. For the next version, we plan to, because it's the business to business, which is not, as our lawyers said, fully affected by GDPR. They have different rules for business to business. They are normal, not used by normal people like us. But uh, next, uh, next project, which will be used by also normal people, uh, uh, we are thinking about having those information in separate, uh, s separate, uh, as a s separate event store probably. And if it's about the user, all the informa sensitive information goes in there, and we only buy some identificator uh, only point there. And if they say delete us, we will delete the the this data uh, we point to. But still, the events that something happened to user ID one two three four. 
it will be there. But if there will be any sensitive data, it must go, must go somewhere else where it can be deleted. But it's the, like, for, for event sourcing, it's nightmare to have a uh, thing like, now forget everything. It's, it's terrible. It's, it goes directly against the event sourcing. But uh, yeah, fortunately, first project we did in this was for business to business. So we are not like uh, affected so much. And now we, we need to split it, definitely. Yeah. I have a question around the state. You said that we don't have to support state anyway. So if imagine if we have thousands of events, yeah. Um, yeah. You can you can store the state uh, if you if you know that your stream will have a thousands of events. You will start using snapshotting, which means that you will snapshot by each one thousand of the events. You will store the state, but probably within the within the event store itself as a as a as a projection of the, of the state. And then we will start folding from 1001, 1002, and so on. But uh, what I meant is don't store it for the read side, because as read side should not affect your your the the queries uh, the, the command side. Uh, it should go it should go the, the, the same way. It should not affect it uh, also. So uh, sometimes too tempting because you have all the information from event store, like store it somewhere, but then you are, again, you are quite coupled. So I like the reactive approach. Something happened, let's do something with it. And if you do it correctly, in a way that each event is important, but uh, it's not the apply which will take, uh, which, will not, which will not decide the business logic, it's pretty easy. You just somehow react on it. You, you will just store it. You know how to store it into table. You know how to store it in the event store. You know how to, store it, how to send the send email. Uh, you don't have to do any ifs, but this is the part when I was talking about the ifs in apply. If you would, uh, if you would have ifs in one apply for applying to event store, then you would have to have the same if for applying to SQL database and same if for sending emails based on some events in different handlers. So, so yeah, so don't store the state for reading, but definitely if you know that your stream will be heavily used. Uh, use snapshotting, but uh, this is the reason why we why we uh, choose the Cosmos DB because it's pretty fast and and I would rather spend a few more milliseconds to to have all of these possibilities to go back than just to store last state. So, so we're not, doing, uh, snapshot. not yet, not yet. We we uh, because we have uh, many streams. But each of them has, let's say, hundreds of events. It's it's like this: reading hundreds of events from uh, from Cosmos DB. So we we don't care yet. If you ask me, one year later, maybe we will start with uh, snapshotting. Uh, but it's not uh, the hard one. Snapshotting, I think, it's it's pretty easy because you have the state inside the command handler. You have the state anyway because you need to use it to validate it. So once you have it and it's validated, you can store it. So that's that's okay. Okay, thank you very much, thank you.